Hey everyone, it's Vyasco of the Vyasco on YouTube channel, and today I'm here to talk to you about Equihash Mining, optimizing your graphics cards for maximum profitability. So, if you're wondering what is Equihash Mining, well, it's these cryptos Zcash, Zencash, Hush, Bitcoin Gold, Z Classic, and this is just on what to mine. There's many others, such as Bitcoin Z. Today, specifically, I'm going to be reviewing how to optimize your NVIDIA graphics cards. I have another video on AMD, but realistically, let's do a quick look here at what to mine. This is this was a projection on six 1080 Ti's, and let's go ahead and put in six 580s. You're gonna quickly see that Equihash is probably not your best bet. And we go down the list, and down the list, and after pretty much every F hash coin, which is Dagger Hashimoto, aka the Ethereum uh, algorithm, any of these other coins would be a better bet. The way what to mine works is it's simply just a calculation. So we'll take this and it's gonna give us this calculation. Personally, the majority of my mining farm is mining Zencast. And you're like, well, why wouldn't you just mine Z Classic? It's the most profitable coin. You gotta understand, these things change constantly. And the most important thing you can do is to optimize your cards so they're doing the best on whatever they are mining, which will make a much bigger profitability difference than chasing the hottest coin right now. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is my Simple Mining Dash. I've got a video on the channel if you're curious about Simple Miner. This isn't sponsored content or anything like that. I just like Simple Miner, so I use it and you'll see it in a lot of my videos. It makes my life simpler and easier. Let's look at the basics. And in full disclaimer, overclocking is at your own risk and all that kind of disclaimer, whatever stuff. And all my rigs are relatively optimized already. And again, I'm no expert here. I'm just a dude with the coolest doge in the world. Now I said the coolest doge in the world. I'm just kidding, your doge is super cool too. <laughs> anyway, uh, point is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click on overclocking. So this is 200 core, 700 memory, and a 200 power limit. This is on a 1080 Ti. Keep in mind, Simple Miner is Linux. Your overclock settings are going to be lower on Windows. The rough number people say is to double your overclock settings going from Windows to Linux, and obviously you would half them going from Linux to Windows. So a similar setting on Windows right here would be 100, 350. The watt setting in Linux is going to be a power limit actual watts. On Windows, you're gonna set a power limit in a percentage, so you're just gonna to have to play around with that and find the sweet spot. Normally people go somewhere around like 65, 75% if they're looking for an efficient setup. So now you see these settings. Let me show you what these settings are doing. Ideally, you want your cards to be a little bit cooler than this and they'll run a little bit better, more around like the 50 Celsius range as opposed to 75. So you can see right here, we're pushing about 700 souls per card. This is a mixed rig, so it has the Gigabyte 1080 Ti's and also Asus 1080 Ti's, they're all blower cards. So we're pushing steady 3,500 souls. And that's what these settings. So let's go over here and see what this set this card was like without any overclock settings and we're gonna leave it at that 200 power limit. So now you can see with the same exact power draw of 200 watts on these cards, I was getting a free 200 souls. 200 souls off of an additional on five 1080 Ti's, not each card obviously, but 200 additional free souls for the whole rig. That's huge. So I'll go ahead and bump these up to just 100, 100, a very basic overclock, and you can see we're at 3283 basically. And let's see what this does to the cards. While we wait for this to load, I will say that I'm going to show the other NVIDIA cards here, but I'm not gonna go so in depth to make this real boring. I'm going in depth on the 1080 Ti, and then I'm gonna break down uh, you know, my best settings for the 1070 Ti, my 1070s, and so forth. Instantly, with a plus 100 core and plus 100 memory, we just gained 100 souls on the rig. That's really 120. 100 souls, 120 souls with just plus 100, plus 100, which if I was gonna give you any recommendation, that is the recommended basic overclock, is just simply 100, 100. It's very seldom that that kind of overclock setting would ever crash a rig, and it'll probably give you a nice little free bump where you have zero worry of stability. Otherwise, you're gonna to wanna to walk your overclock settings up. What exactly does walk your overclock settings up mean? So, basically, we'd go something like 150 core, 200 memory, then we try 300 memory, we would try 400 memory. That what you're gonna see, you can push your memory pretty far in Equihash, 
but it's a core a too high of a core clock that's going to crash your rig fast. Obviously, you can bring your memory up too high and crash your rig as well. What's going to happen is it's going to be called a soft crash. Basically, the miner's going to shut down. The rig's going to crash because the GPU basically says, whoa, whoa, whoa. So with everything, every card is going to be different. Every single card is going to be different. That's why a lot of people prefer to have a rig of the same card, hoping that you have the same memory inside of them. Each GPU has the potential to have different memory manufacturers in it which can change how much you can overclock that card. Generally said, Samsung is referred to as having the best memory because you can overclock it and get the best hash rates out of it. That's why it's the best memory. That reminds me, I just wanna quickly cover Equihash. In this blog post from Zcash, who basically brought Equihash to the crypto world, they go over what a basic of what is Equihash. Uh, these two guys basically made it why they picked it, and basically it comes down to the fact that it's a uh, proof of work algorithm with high assurance that it's not going to be uh, used on ASICs. The main feature of Equash is the fact that it's high memory intensive and it's supposed to be ASIC resistant because of that. Equash is more memory intensive than some of the other algorithms. What exactly does that mean? Basically, more of the uh, memory you have on your graphics card, for example, a 1080 Ti with 11 gigabytes, is going to perform the best here. That's why the 1080 Ti is great on Equihash and not that awesome on Ethereum because those extra three gigs don't make that much of a difference and your card is much better suited to be mining on Equihash where it can really shine and utilize all of that memory. That's the basics of overclocking which I just showed you in the Simple Mining OS platform and if you're wondering well how do I do this on Windows you're gonna to want to use MSI Afterburner Okay, you can just you know Google this or I can leave a link in the description. Just msi.com slash page slash afterburner. This is what you want. This is a basic free tool that allows you to um, overclock your cards on your Windows platform. What's in mind also gives you some base numbers to overclock your card. You'll see that it says 65 TDP and so it's recommending 15500 on your windows platform personally i don't run any rigs other than my gaming rig for mining on windows i use everything on linux i find it to be more stable easier to work with i can remotely manage my mining farm through smos with the breeze right here so you'll have to find out what you want to do personally but again you know these are some good numbers to you know start out with plus 100 100 is always a great place to start and work your way up from there in regards to some of my actual settings and how they're performing Let's take a look at it. If you watched our 1050 Ti uh, mining rig build on the channel, you would have saw us build this rig. But here are the settings we run on that 150 core, 700 memory, 60 power limit. It pushes about, uh, like I think off the top of my head, 193 souls, roughly a card. And then we're going to move our way up to a 1063 gigabyte. So if you watched our live stream, we uh, built this car, this rig out in that live stream. And the best settings we found in that stream were 150 core and 700 memory with a 65 watt power limit. So, well, what else? Let's talk about the 1070s. I just built another video with my seven uh, 1070s that I have from my old trio of mining rigs. And you'll see that I'm pushing 465 souls, 450, whatever. Uh, pretty, pretty freaking good numbers as far as I'm concerned with this rig. And that is with. 200 core, 1000 memory overclock, and 125 power limit. If you're wondering about 1060, 6 gigabytes, which I kind of skipped over, well, you guessed it. <laughs> we got a build on that. And the settings we used in that build were 100 core, 700 memory, 90 on the power limit, and we we're getting about 305 souls uh, per each 1060. Next up, we have our 1070 Ti mining rig, which you can see right here. It's pushing almost 500 souls per watt. And I think this may be due to the power supply we have on it. I'm going to switch it out for a better power supply and put on 240 volt. But right now, it's uh, I'm kind of maxing out the power supply, which isn't obviously recommended. But on that, we're pushing uh, 150 core, 500 memory, and 120 watts. And that's giving us stable settings in a hot garage. Next up, we have 1080s. These 1080s have been one of the, I guess you could say, more disappointing cards for me, which would be... Uh, you know 500 to 520 souls and that's with the settings of 200 core 500 memory and 125 watts that could probably be tweaked a little bit or these zotac 1080 minis are just a little disappointing so we've already covered 1080 ti's but i just want to make a note that they're one of the more finicky cards and with that you're going to want to walk the overclock settings up and don't assume that the 1080 ti 
uh, X brand is the same as Y brand, you're probably going to have different overclock settings on that rig. Alright guys, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to overclock your mining rig, really with just NVIDIA cards to optimize your hash on Equihash mining. Again, this is for Equihash coins only. Your overclock settings are going to be different on uh, every algorithm. In addition to that, with the miners you use, this was all shown with DSTM as you can see here. And that is going to change. If you're mining with EWBF or B minor, your overclock settings will probably be a little bit different. Not too much, but you may have to tweak them, which is okay, but just keep that in mind. I would also like to note that I'm still testing B minor, but EWBF is always underperforming DSTM. See, I kind of try to lead that up like uh, you didn't know I was going to say. But yeah, DSTM has proven time and time again to be better as far as efficiency and hash rate for me than EWBF miner. That's also an abandoned mining project that's no longer supported by their developer. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you're wondering what I'm mining personally, mostly Zen Cash. I have accumulated a nice little stash of Z Classic for this upcoming Z Classic Bitcoin private fork, which I have a video coming this week on. Other than that, I mean, obviously Zcash is the big dog on Equihash. It's never a not safe bet to mine that. But do you really see Zcash, you know, quadrupling? Or could you see Zen Cash, even Hush, Bitcoin Gold, Z Classic quadrupling? Maybe, maybe not. It's up to you. I'm placing most of my bets on Zen Cash. And as you saw, I've got a rig over here on Bitcoin Z. And I've already got my little stash of Z Classic for this fork. And we'll see. Keep in mind that a new coin is coming to the... Uh, Equash algorithm very soon, that's Bitcoin private, and you will see a lot of hash power thrown at that quickly. So anyway, more on that later. Make sure to subscribe to the Voscoin YouTube channel to stay up to date with all that kind of crazy stuff and everything else. I'll see you next time. Yeah.